Hello, welcome back. So we are moving on through our um, topics of chapter nine with joint movements. So in your notes, there's a whole long list of movements that can take place um, along these articulations. So we're just gonna go through them. I'll do the best I can trying to illustrate them. Um, usually it's better in lecture because I'm up there and I can move my body around. It's a little bit harder when I can, I have to do it in this mirror imaged camera here, but we'll do the best we can. So the first thing we're gonna do take a look at different types of movement based kind of in the three-dimensional world. And you can do this with um, your hand or a pencil or kind of like what they have up here on the um, screen here in the picture from your book. So if we're gonna start off with my initial position, so here's my pencil, okay? Linear movement would be taking that pencil and just moving it in, in line, like you're just drawing a line on the paper on your hands. So linear, if we're going to take away the pencil and just do if these were two bones, it would be like this. Just kind of a gliding movement, um, kind of rubbing on uh, each other. If we go back to our initial position, angular is you're going to make an angle between this surface and this structure, the pencil. So angular movement would be like this. So I'm decreasing the angle towards you and away from you. So I'm decreasing the angle between these two structures. So that would be like the elbow is a really good example of angular movement. So here's one. So I'm decreasing the angle here. I'm increasing the angle here. That is um, angular motion. Then if we take our pencil and kind of combo angular movement, but instead of just going in one direction, let's angle it and then draw a circle, like with the eraser part up here. This is what we call circumduction. So a good example of circumduction, like if you hold your arm out like this and draw a big circle, like you're drawing a circle on chalkboard, that would be circumduction at your shoulder, okay? You can do circumduction of your finger of this joint here, like this. Right, so I'm drawing a, a circle, <laughs> tracing a circle with my fingers. So that would be circumduction at this joint here. There, circumduction. You can do circumduction at your wrist, right? You can do circumduction of your head. Woo! Circumduction. The last type of movement is called rotation. So this is, we're not moving at an angle, we're not moving it along the base, we are twisting. If you can see that, maybe with the writing, you can see it a little bit better. So this is rotation. So again, if we're going to pick this joint here, we cannot do rotation at any of this joint here. We can't do rotation here. We can do rotation at our shoulder, like this. Um, we can do rotation here at our proximal radial ulnar joint. This is called pronation and supination. We'll see that next. You can do a little bit of rotation at your neck. And you can do rotation at your hips. That's part of that triaxial um, joint movement we talked about before. Okay, so let's move on. So the joint, the types of movements that you'll see in this kind of the longer list in your notes, a lot of them are typically paired in opposing movements. So they're partners, but they're antagonistic. They're opposite. Okay. So the first pair, and you have these pictures in your textbook and your lab manual, and you, it would probably benefit you to actually do them as you're learning them. So the first pair is called flexion and extension. So again, in anatomical position, flexion is you're going to decrease the angle between the two body parts. So if I'm at like a 180 degrees here, and then I move my arm forward, and I'm now at a 90 or a 45 or a 90 degree angle here, I've done flexion. And then to move back, I'm increasing the angle between my trunk and my arm. So flexion, extension, flexion, extension. If I'm looking at my wrist, flexion, decreasing the angle between my arm and my hand, extension. If I'm looking at my fingers, flexion, I'm decreasing the angle between my hand, extension. Between the fingers, flexion, extension. The neck, flexion, I'm decreasing the angle between my, ch my chin is coming to my chest, flexion, extension, okay? Flexion, extension. 
reflection session. Okay, you try. Um, then there is a third one that's actually associated with this partner is what if you go behind um, anatomical position? So at your shoulder, you, maybe you can do flexion, extension, hyperextension. Now, not all joints that can do flexion extension can do hyperextension. So I'm pretty flexible at my this joint here. So I can do flexion, extension, and hyperextension a little bit, a little bit. So there's anatomical position, flexion, extension, hyperextension. I can pull it back a little bit more. But I can't do that here. Flexion, extension, I can't really bend it past anatomical position. Or your elbow, flexion, extension. I can't, I can't make it go further down this way. So you typically sh can't hyperextend at some joints where you can't at others. So flexion, extension, hyperextension, like looking straight up, okay? The next movement, so that flexion extension is typically in the front and the back plane, kind of anterior and posterior plane. The next pair is in this coronal plane, like imagine this, the coronal section, like you're sectioning yourself between front and half. So that is abduction and adduction. Abduction, think of abduction, like getting kidnapped. You're kidnapping your body part away from anatomical position. So at my shoulder, abduction is moving it away in that, that coronal or frontal plane. Adduction is adding it back towards my anatomical position. So you can see that in the picture right here. Abduction, adduction. And then they're showing it in the hands here in anatomical position. Abduction, moving away, and adduction, moving everybody back together. So your arms and legs do the most abduction and adduction because there's a midline, right? So moving away from the midline is abduction. Moving back towards the midline is adduction. You can't really abduct or adduct your head because it's not moving away from the midline. It just has to stay put on the midline. Okay. Um, Here's circumduction. We talked about that. So this big kind of part of our movement is like drawing a circle in the air. Um, okay, I don't think the next one is on this picture. So we'll move to the next picture. Is uh, The next one is rotation. So we have medial and lateral rotation or left and right. So if you're taking a look at your head, that'd be left for me, left rotation, right rotation. Okay. If you're taking a look at your arm, right, so medial rotation is rotating it close to your midline, and lateral rotation is, is moving it back away. I wonder if I can scooch back a little bit, if you can see it a little bit better. So medial rotation, lateral rotation, okay? Um, and you can have trunk or like along your spine, so this would just be right and left rotation here, just like with your head. Um, and your leg, I'm not gonna stand up, but you can do your leg kind of, because you have that ball and socket joint, allows you to do the rotation. A specialized type of rotation only takes place at your, um, between your elbow and your wrist, and this is called pronation and supination. So you can kind of see this um, pattern here. So pronation is when you're moving it, you're basically, your elbow is staying put, but your whole forearm, you're going from like this way to this way. So pronation, supination. And you'll have muscles. You're going to learn muscles called the pronator muscle turns it this way, and the supinator muscle pulls it back. Okay. But my, my elbow joint isn't moving because I can hold that tight here. It's my radius is flipping over my ulna. And you'll be able to see that once we get to the skeletons um, in lab. Okay. All right. Um, I think those are all the ones listed on this picture. So next we have some specialized ones that are found only at certain parts of the body. So um, on the foot, we have a couple associated with the foot. So this is, I'm going to pretend, let's see if I can, I don't have any shoes close by. So this is my foot or my feet, right? So if I'm going, pointing them inwards, like if you're walking on the outside edge of your, the feet, this is called inversion. And if you're walking on the inside, this is called eversion. So invert, evert here. For the other ones, we have dorsiflexion is like digging your heels in, kind of pointing your toes up, and plantar flexion would be tippy toes, like standing on your tippy toes. Okay, so inversion, 
eversion, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. Okay, those are all just associated with the foot. And then um, for the hand, we have a special movement where our thumb can come and touch the tips of our other fingers. This is called opposition this way. And it's not listed here, but I think it's in the text called reposition is opening back to op um, anatomical position. So remember, you, uh, you might know primates. We are of the animal group primates. We have opposable thumbs, if you've ever heard that, because we can grip, right? We can hold on to things. We can go like this. Other animals cannot do that. So they don't have the structure of the joint that's found here. It's called a saddle joint. We're going to see that later. Okay, so that's opposition. Protraction and retraction are moving body parts in the horizontal plane. So they're showing here with a jaw, right? You can move the jaw forward and back. Protraction, retraction. You can also do that with your head, protract, retract, and you can do it with your shoulders, protract, retract, okay? And then we have depression and elevation. So depression will be opening, moving things low, and elevation, moving things up, we can do it with our shoulders. Elevate, depress, elevate, depress. And then we can have flexion, we talked about like this, flexion, extension, hyperextension. We can also do lateral towards the side. So we can do that all the way along our spine, lateral flexion. Okay. Um, all right, and then the last um, slide I wanna show you is just some other categories or classifications of synovial joints kind of based on their appearance, um, kind of what action they do. So we have our gliding joints, kind of that monaxial movement here, linear movement. We have our hinge joint, like our elbow would be an example of a hinge. Our interphalangeal joints would be a hinge. Condylar are these biaxial joints like this. We can move in this direction. We can move in this direction. It allows us to do circumduction. The saddle joint is only found here at the thumb. It allows us to kind of do like this and opposition. So we can do um, abduction, adduction, as well as opposition. And then a pivot joint, um, like between your C1 and C2 vertebrae or the um, radial, proximal radial ulnar joints is a pivot joint, kind of allows you to do rotation. And then the ball and socket at the shoulders and the hips allow you to do those triaxial movements. So we can move in the anterior, posterior plane. We can move in the frontal plane, abduction, adduction, and we can do rotation, right? So ball and socket allows us to do that only in our shoulders and our hips, okay? So that wraps up our mini lesson on body movements. The rest of the mini lessons are going to take a look at um, individual representative articulation. So taking a look at the names of the ligaments that are associated with these joints and maybe some other structures um, like muscles and bursa or tendons also associated with that. And then I'll tag on one, um, the last concept we'll take a look at is um, arthritis, since that is a disorder that affects synovial joints. All right, I'll see you next time.